For our next few videos, we are going to go through and formalize our hypothesis testing process. Uh, so we're going to start off with about the first three. So whenever we do our hypothesis testing, like one of the first questions that we should be asking uh, is our data type. Uh, namely, are we dealing with numerical data? Or are we dealing with categorical? The reason for why we do this is because the testing methods or the way that we're able to answer our questions is different if we are dealing with numerical data or categorical. And remember, if we're dealing with numerical, we are really interested in the mean, the true mean, and with categorical, we're really interested in pi, or the true proportion. If we can identify the data type, uh, we, can, we can really narrow down our options or what we're trying to do. So if we remember back to when we were calculating out our confidence intervals, and remember there were slightly different ways of how we calculated out like our margin of errors uh, if we were dealing with proportions versus if we were dealing with means. And that holds true here in our hypothesis testing. All right, so that's like the first thing that we need to do is our, is our data type. And the next one down is really close to it. It's this, we're dealing with our uh, population. Population and parameter. So I already kind of gave a hint on the parameters up there. Uh, that we're going to be dealing with mu or we're going to be dealing with pi uh, based upon if we're dealing with numerical or categorical. The population is just who are we interested in? Who are we trying to make some conclusion about? So the population is who we are trying to make some statement about. So if we're dealing with, uh, so if we're dealing with like uh, dogs and we're trying to figure out like how fast they can run, our parameter would be the true mean speed that they can run, and then the population would be these dogs. Now. We probably wouldn't be talking about just like all dogs in general. Maybe you're really interested in like very fast dogs, like maybe greyhounds or whippets. Um, but we need to identify who that population is. And when we identify who our population is, it helps us later on, like when we're trying to take a sample, of who should be included in our sample. Uh, so if we can figure out who our population is, it kind of helps us identify um, who our uh, sample is as well. And so parameters for this class at least, we are just interested in, for right now, mu or pi. We'll introduce some other ideas later on, but we're going to start off with this. All right, so those are kind of our first two steps. Identify our data type and determine our population and parameter. OK, the third one that we need to do is we need to check some of our assumptions. <clears throat> Now, when we check our assumptions, we have to kind of take it from one of two standpoints. So one standpoint is that the, the experiment has already been conducted, everything's already been, been done, and so we just need to check to make sure it's like, can we even do this analysis? We need to check the assumptions. So some of those assumptions that we need to check are things like, uh, can we invoke the central limit theorem? So all those requirements for the central limit theorem, they still hold. We still have to be meeting these requirements. Uh, so we've got to check the central limit theorem. Another good thing that we should check, you know, is like, do we have a good, uh, a good sample? Right? And so what actually makes a good sample? Well, it needs to be representative.
And usually we get that by random testing or random sampling. And we'll go into a little bit more detail of, of what exactly random sampling and random testing looks like inside of, of a hypothesis, <clears throat> of a hypothesis testing. Um, but yeah, this is, this is basically what our first three steps are. Now, one caveat that I just want to put in is these 10 steps, they're not like the gospel. Uh, sometimes you'll see a few of these things reorganized. Uh, maybe, you know, you have five before four. That's okay. But what we really need is we need to have these basic ideas. So we're going to use kind of this 10 step. I've done it with eight or nine before. Um, but we're going to use these 10 steps to kind of help us formalize out our testing. So these are our first three, data type, make sure we got that identified, our population and our parameter of interest, and checking our assumptions.